Rahmatullah ati Rasul of Awlul Amri minkum and always a reminder for myself and Abdul Qalaji Sadai for miskeen, azan, and jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence, we took a path in which to be nothing. Alhamdulillah Allah granted for us to enter into this holy month of Jumat Thani, the sixth lunar month and by the Sultanate of nine and opening the reality of 54 and Surat Al-Qamar addressing this holy month and the realities of guidance into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad that this way from the heart of Prophet taught to awliyaullah is this way of marifa in which the Qur'an has 12 gates directing us into the heart and to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad eternal soul, Manzil Qur'an, the location in which Holy Qur'an is emanating to all of creation. And alhamdulillah this way of guidance is based on the understanding of on and off one and zero binary code, whatever somebody understands. If they understand basic English they're on and off, if they understand sciences then it's binary code. The symbol of the moon and the qamar is the station of off. The station of the shams and the sun is one, is on and our life is about following the, the light, that which is eternal. The sun is a symbol of Allah's eternity, that which has no mass, that which has a light, follow the light. The light is superior, the light is what nourishes. The light is what controls the world of form, it sustains the world of form. Allah sustains everything but by cause and effect we understand that what Allah has created and to understand this creation is a way towards marifa and understanding this reality. And alhamdulillah in the month of Qamar, the month of the moon and the realities of being Qamarun, that these awliyaullah are inspiring within our hearts that come into the heart, into the cave, into the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. and take a path of being nothing. And recently we talked with a brother, a dear brother and we were talking about meetings and, and meeting with people and the reality that is important on this path and the path lends its secret if you truly understand what it means to be off. Now that can be through email, through physical, through any interaction with this path, with this way, with this love and ishq for Allah that's manifesting and reflecting in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and that are inherited by the Ulul Amr. When Allah is asking, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Atiullah, Atiya Rasul wa Ulul Amri minkum that this obedience to Allah that is, is following the obedience of Sayyidina Muhammad which is following this Ulul Amr, 
and the way of the ulul am they carry that rope from the Divine the Presence, from the Presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and they manifest that upon this earth. And their system that Allah has designed for them is to teach people, teach people this binary path to shut off, teach people to turn off. If they're capable of learning how to turn off, they have more chance of absorbing. The one whom is on is going to absorb little to nothing. So even in the reality of binary coding it's basically an energy of a plus and minus. So when you put out a charge the negative charge will be attracted to the positive charge that the one whom practices being off, the difficulty of practicing being off actually lends the state of absorbing that which is on. Without learning to be off there's no absorption because when you're on you reflect and deflect that which is on. So that becomes immense in our tafakkur and contemplation that we're going to email the shaykh and we're going to show our state of being on. That, oh you know I found some issues with what you teach, there's no relationship there. You're showing yourself as something on where even you think you know something, you don't know anything. And admit that to yourself, empty yourself, take a path in which to be nothing. As soon as you put yourself as on there is no relationship. And Allah gave the dalil with very two huge personalities. One Sayyidina Musa Kalimullah from the six great Prophets of Allah who speaks to Allah and sitting with His people giving wisdoms and knowledges and He told His people, His people were astonished, well you know everything, is there anyone who knows anything more than you? And He said, no I don't think so. So <laughs> the immensity of that knowledge and Allah was not pleased with that answer that, no above every knower there's a knower. I'm going to send you to one who knows more and knows a different knowledge. I sent to Sayyidina Khidr and the, the adab is set in Surat Al-Kahf. That's why the tariqahs use it as the dalil from Allah on the mannerisms. So Surah 18 is equals manners of tariqah in which Sayyidina Khidr warned Sayyidina Musa that we're about to meet and I don't think it's going to work. You're not going to have patience and you're not going to understand the knowledges that I'm going to show you. And from the lack of patience this won't work and this relationship won't work. Don't ask until I speak of something, means teaching for us the reminder is that you have to enter into a binary state. Even you know everything that you possibly think you could know, you train yourself to be off and then as a result of the immensity and the, the station of humility to be off you're able to absorb more. So even no matter what Allah bestows upon these servants who've been trained in this reality, they're in a continuous state of off in the presence of whom Allah directed them to direct themselves because they have a binary state in which they go off and they're on in the presence of that ruhaniyat and the presence of whom their hearts are connected with. 
they're in a continuous presence to be off to absorb and to absorb the reflection coming. As a result in their state they go out to their students and begin to teach. And the reflection and the true absorption of that energy can only manifest in the student when they truly understood to be off. Otherwise they want to meet the shaykh but they want to come and talk. And they may actually come distances to meet with the shaykh and they spend so much time talking because they have so much of their own and they absorb nothing from that association. Or they try to email, there's no difference. That, I know this and what you're doing, I find something wrong with this or whatever their opinions are. There's no relationship going to be established because this is not an imam from the masjid, they have their role to play. This is the role of guidance and the realities of guidance. If in your ultimate humility you were able to train oneself to be off and they absorb, they absorb. If they found in their absorption that they found a benefit within it, they stayed because they understood that when I'm off the amount that flowing to me I'm able to absorb. If in their state of humility of being off they found that what's being reflected to them is of no benefit then with humility they dissipated and left. Nobody heard or saw them come to go. See the difference in the character is different because they're in a state of nothing. In a state of nothing they come as nothing, if it was a benefit they remain as nothing because they're continuously absorbing. So the moon follows the sun, doesn't question the sun, what you doing? What's this? The moon took its path and that's why you see the moon so beaten. Moon has been tested, moon has been tried. The moon it takes and absorbs its difficulties, its imtihan, everything that Allah has given to it and this, this state of humility in which to, to remain off which is not an easy state. Some people think, oh well that's so easy, it's, it's harder to have to give an opinion about everything. No, it's actually much more difficult. The opinion a two-year-old can do that. We said before a two-year-old can walk into a room and find where the crack is and tell everyone there's a crack in the wall. The Rijal who's been trained by Allah can look into everything and find something beautiful in everything. That what distinguishes them as the men of God, that they can find the flower in the midst of… in the, in the middle of rubbish. So it's not the, the ability to point problems and, and that's why many times problems are surrounding shaykhs to see how clever people think they are to point out the wrong when instead they should hide the wrong and point out the positive. One who focuses on the wrong is the state of arrogance and the one inside of them. It's not a state of humility. Nahi wal munkar is, is uh, for oneself not for others. That to find and see something wrong and talk about it. No tariqah comes, that's actually first for yourself. That did you find all the wrong within yourself? Did you find all the sins within yourself? Did you find all the reasons Allah would be angered with you, would be punishing you, you resolved and cleansed them? Then go out now and talk to humanity which that doesn't happen because that's only for the messengers of Allah Everyone else they should be spreading rahmah and love and kindness and they should be working upon themselves. So binary state is not something easy. 
the binary state and the success within tariqahs and guidance and following a shaykh, even meeting a shaykh, is that I train myself that I'm nothing. And what I'm in need of, I don't have to articulate through my tongue because Allah you're, you're going into like a Divinely Presence. If you believe a person is a shaykh and is a real guide, a real, real shaykh, well, what did Allah says when He calls you into His presence? He's going to seal your tongue. Why He needs to hear from your mouth for your condition? They know the condition that's within the heart. The heart and the soul will speak to somebody who works with their heart and soul, not tongue to tongue. The, the tongue is the abode of lies and hypocrisy. The tongue says every delusional and illusional word to make mysteries and, and, and uh, mystify. So it's not that. This way of reality is I negate myself, I'm nothing. And in my nothingness, Ya Rabbi, my immense belief in Allah that I empty myself and I want to go in the presence of Your servants. And what I'm in need of, Allah will send to me. And when I train myself in my humility, I train to remain silent amongst them. And by remaining silent amongst them, I'm in a state in which to drink from their fountain, not give them something to drink. See, either one is, is pouring the Divine nectar or the other one is drinking it. So if you talk a lot in their presence, email a lot, talk… emailing in the sense that you want to give them guidance, you want to give them what they should be saying, what they should be doing. It's the same character whether somebody's meeting a shaykh in person or meeting them through the internet. If you're the one who wants to be giving them this Divinely nectar then they have to sit and, and drink from your cup. There won't be a relationship because their humility they'll basically shut off and stay quiet. If the student wants to achieve then they train themselves to control themselves and in that association they remain silent and in a state of absorption. And this is from the oceans of immense tawheed, it's not easy to accomplish because the tawheed is to remember that Allah put this condition in my heart and send me to sit there. And if this is a servant of Allah he puts upon the tongue of that servant to answer my condition because it's under the same dominion and the same hand of Allah if they serve and worship their Lord. But that requires people to have faith. So the tariqahs have immense realities and the realities are achieved by the correct manners and the mannerisms. And this mannerism is now being shown by science. As much as we can turn off, we can receive the signal. And this will be in higher and higher and higher darajats. As much as we're going to broadcast our signal, as much as we will be shutting off and receiving nothing. So then in every aspect of our life this is an important lesson for ourselves on how to take the maximum benefit, how to absorb the most from my relationship with the tariqah, with the shaykhs, how to achieve this light and this energy to come to me and how to train myself to be in a constant state of off. Then I'll practice my off state in everything. That's why they ask people, don't go out and give talks, 
Don't go out and put yourself that you want to start to talk, you want to say this, you want to say that. You're encouraging the negative state of egoism because the representation is not for the one. Those are shaykhs through their seclusions, their ijazas from their shaykhs, from Prophet That's a different state in which Prophet gives an ijazah that in your state of nothingness, the state that you achieved is to represent the one. As a result, you speak and they're already trained on how to be off and they're continuously off and when they're on, they're on. And anyone who wants to receive from that tajalli, they have to train to be off. Because if they're too busy being on, they'll absorb nothing from the relationship. So then the state of off for the student is then continuous training. That don't let that state to come up, it'll be hard to turn off. Because everything around us now, so you see that shaitan knows this system, right? That's why Facebook, that's why live broadcast, everyone on earth now has a mobile phone and shaitan encourages them, broadcast live. Even they have nothing to broadcast, they're going live. <coughs> why? So they can never absorb anything and as a result their oneness became pharaonic, what awliya call ananiya, I, I, I am important, I am the one. But it's not the, the we of heaven and representing the heavens, it's the nafsani in which they want to represent themselves, something empty and, and devoid of Divine and all from the nafs and bad desires and bad characteristics. That character is not something to be encouraged because then when we come into the presence of, of the path and our spiritual path becomes that much more difficult. So the spiritual path is going to be something continuous in our life, a state in which to train myself in which to be off, a state in which to continuously, continuously humble myself. So even when we go to relatives and, and family and, and all sorts of environments, <coughs> we learn the humility of remaining silent. Because that later is a different training that you, you go into an environment and you know it's going to be confrontational, you start to argue, you start to fight, you, you start to get in debates and political debates and, all, and then at the end you say, why did I even get into that? Well, because the path was based on silence, is the fasting with, with our words that I have to remain silent, be conscious of myself and practice this state and speak when it's necessary and when there's somebody who actually will benefit from listening. If they're not going to benefit from listening, so then why are you wasting your words? We pray that Allah give us a, a deep understanding, it's something to meditate and contemplate for ourselves that to always, and this is a continuous state in which that somebody asks, when we go there then you know what, what's that going to be? So we don't take ourselves anywhere where there's going to be people just jabbering and talking because they're not interested in what we have to say and we're not interested in having a free meal. Wherever we go it has to be for a teaching. If they want to learn, they have to be trained in which to be off. Otherwise you're going to an environment everyone just wants to talk then, then what's the purpose of our presence there? So that's not a state in which we're of any interest. So it's a continuous practice in life that when we want to absorb from these realities we train in which to take our state to be off. If we can achieve in that then we absorb the immense amounts of energy and immense amounts of blessings. And look at everything around us now is based on this understanding of binary code. Everything is being conveyed now by this state of on and off. And son whom has the most power and the most gifts from Allah if they were to understand that state and master that state, 
then that's why Allah is giving from us a continuous the shamsi wal qamar, shamsi wal qamar. Because if every state a human understood, be like the moon and in your life follow the sun, follow the light, devoid yourself of yourself, negate yourself, what would you? You would reflect the beatific light of the sun. And Allah is giving for us isharat and guidance that uh, instead of reflecting yourself and your nafs, if you negate yourself you reflect the Divinely light and the Divinely reflection that Allah inshaAllah to send out. That's why only Allah their state is qamarun, they are like the full moons of this nation in which their continuous nazar upon the holy soul of Sayyidina Muhammad dresses them, blesses them and reflect out a light to the nation. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from these immense realities. And this is the month in which Allah is giving that dressing and giving that blessings of light and the rizq that comes to the soul. Those whom they are rich in the rizq of their soul, it overflows upon their physicality. Means we try to achieve the rizq of the soul before you achieve the rizq of the body. People come to shaykhs for prayers for business, for money, for opportunities, jobs, all the emails that are coming in that we need this job, we need this money, means you seek the rizq of your mulk from these reflections of this reality which is incorrect. That what you want from the physicality is something very temporary and if you take that limited, limited blessing you miss the greater blessing. And Mawlana Shaykh would teach, there would be lines of people, they would line up to ask for du'a from the shaykh. He said, 99% are lined up asking for their business because they don't understand the system. That if you want for your business and you didn't want for your soul, you're bankrupt. What the benefit of your business having some income coming in for a few months but your soul has no business. Means the, the light of the soul is superior than the physicality. Those whom their soul is rich by Allah means filled with lights, <coughs> filled with blessings. When Allah's nazar and Allah sends a faiz upon the soul of insan, it dresses their soul eternally. When they come they ask for the lights of their soul, the lights of faith, the ishq and the love and the muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad that is suffice. If they receive that and achieve that light, that light opens every mulk of dunya, makes dunya to run after them. But the one whom runs for dunya it, the dunya runs away from them. So it means that everything in our life has an immense reality. When Allah is giving lights in this month, this is the month in which to Ya Rabbi send this rizq upon my soul, send your lights upon my soul, let my soul to reach its eternal, its eternal wealth that you would complete your ni'mat. Allah's ni'mat was not the mulk of dunya. But his ni'mat was the mulk of the soul, that I complete my favours upon your soul, I wrote for your provision upon your soul. <coughs> I wrote the knowledges in which your soul would have, those knowledges determine the rizq of your physicality. That's why everything they're teaching is this system, when the shaykh speaks write it. Why? It changes your kitab. Your kitab now has from these haqqaiqs, as soon as the kitab has these haqqaiqs written in it, the angels, the rizq, everything of that servant has to change. 
Because now that servant is walking on this earth with Haqiqat al Muhammadiyah. Not just he woke up, he had kufi, he did these sins and he did this, he did that. But the soul is now carrying honourable realities of Prophet which its weight can't be understood. So even their, their talks when the student is absorbing that's how they increase the rizq of their soul is their writing. They're writing so that they know if they provide an action the angels will create a reaction by writing on their kitab. Then their, their zikrs, their practices, these holy nights, their khidmat and their service is dressing their soul, blessing their soul and that their soul is reaching a nobility in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad There are medallions and, and immense gifts being dressed upon. That soul is rich in Allah's Divinely Kingdom. That wealth of the soul has full dominion over the physicality. The one whom soul is rich in heavens has the full dominion over dunya. Tabarakin ladi bi yadihi mulk and Subhana ladi bi yadihi. Means Allah is describing for us that those whom, whom they gave that blessing, whom they gave that mulk, that malakut, they have a dominion over the physical. So the most important is to reach the malakut, the heavenly realm, the world of light and realities. The one whom is strong in that world of light, no doubt then they have uh, dominion over the physical world. The physical world doesn't weigh like a weight of a mosquito, the wing of a mosquito for Allah What Allah cares for is the spiritual realm, that's the goal, that is which is eternal, that is the haqq, not the falsehood of dunya. The falsehood of dunya is perishing, zahukan and is uh, disintegrating. That's why we see when people die they disintegrate, that was their dunya. But that's from malakut of their light and their soul is eternal. And we pray that Allah address us from the realities of eternity and grant us from this dominion and this world of light, this bounty that Allah give to us, give to Sayyidina Muhammad give to Ahlul Bayt and Ashab al Nabi and awliyaullah fi samahi wa fi la'ad, Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat al miyasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.